Rome is the center of perhaps the most mythologized act of martyrdom to date, and no, I'm not talking about JC, instead Galileo Galilei. In 1633, he was brought before the Inquisition and sentenced to indefinite imprisonment for claiming that the Earth orbits the Sun. This was science versus religion in its purest form. Or was it? This telling of the Galileo story, of Galileo as science's Socrates, has become more symbol and less fact as the centuries have gone by. But the reality is more complicated and the nuances more intricate than a simple religion versus science. Galileo was the foremost scientist of his time, an innovator and a popularizer. He publicly denied the teachings of Aristotle, the unquestioned authority of contemporary philosophers. He developed and used the most accurate telescopes of his age, and most importantly for us, he endorsed the Copernican hypothesis, that the Earth orbits the Sun in direct contradiction of Catholic orthodoxy. Galileo was born in 1564 and attended the University of Pisa from the age of 18, almost immediately switching from medicine to mathematics. He left the university without a degree at 21 for financial reasons, but so impressed were they by his mind that he was soon invited back to teach. In 1592, Galileo took a professorship at Padua, which he held for 18 years, what he called the happiest in his life. In 1611, he publicly endorsed the Copernican hypothesis, and in 1616, the Holy Office of the Vatican declared that the Copernican hypothesis was heretical. The Pope summoned Galileo, and he was ordered not to hold, teach, or defend the heresy. Galileo agreed. However, in 1632, Galileo published the Dialogue of the Two Chief Systems of the World, in which he defended the Copernican hypothesis once again. In 1633, he was summoned by the Inquisition. On the 21st of April, he was questioned under the threat of torture, and the next day, read his recantation. He was sentenced to indefinite imprisonment, and died nine years later, in 1642. There are two dates that interest us. The years of 1616 and 1633. These are the trials of Galileo. Preceding the first trial of 1616, a priest called Paolo Foscarini wrote to the Cardinal Robert Bellarmino, arguing that to claim that the Earth orbits the Sun is not a contradiction of the Bible. Here is what Bellarmino wrote in reply to both Foscarini and Galileo. To affirm that the Sun is really fixed in the centre of the heavens, and that the Earth revolves very swiftly around the Sun, is a very dangerous thing, not only by irritating all the theologians and scholastic philosophers, but also by injuring our holy faith, by making the sacred scripture false. In this one sentence, we have the essence of the Church's position. The Church held that the Earth was the centre of the universe, and that the Sun rotated around it. It believed this for two reasons. The first is an attachment to Aristotle, which had become essential to Catholic thinking. Aristotle's system was used to defend things like transubstantiation, the changing of bread into flesh at communion, a belief that Protestants like Martin Luther attacked, and Aristotle's whole system was built upon the premise that the Earth was stationary, and if it wasn't the case, as Galileo claimed, Aristotle's system fell apart. As William E. Carroll writes, Luther attacked Aristotle, Galileo seemed to attack Aristotle. So it's not hard to conclude that Galileo, like Luther, attacked Catholicism itself. The second reason relied upon a literal interpretation of the Bible. At two points it seems to claim that the sun orbits the earth. Joshua 10 verse 12, Joshua spoke with the Lord, and he said, In the presence of Israel, stand still, O sun. And Psalm 93 verse 1, Thou hast fixed the earth immovable and firm. And this is why Cardinal Bellarmino claims that to affirm the Copernican hypothesis is to deny the Bible. But Bellarmino had something else to say as well. If there were a true demonstration that the Sun was in the centre of the universe, it would be necessary to use careful consideration in explaining the scriptures that seemed contrary. In other words, if you could prove it, then religious interpretation would have to bow to the authority of the scientific evidence. 
But of course, Galileo could not prove it. He had strong suspicions. Between 1609 and 1611, through the use of highly powerful telescopes of his own design, he had determined that the moon was full of craters, and so probably made of the same sort of stuff as Earth, and perhaps underwent similar motions, and that Venus was a planet that orbited the sun. The indications were there, but the proof was absent. This meant that in 1616 the Inquisition declared that it was heretical to question the Church on the immobility of the Earth. They commanded that Galileo could not hold, teach or defend that heresy, and the case was settled. Why then did Galileo, 16 years later, publicly hold, teach and defend the notion that the Earth orbited the Sun? The answer is provided in a 1964 lecture by Giorgio de Santillana. The famous injunction was a forgery, a false record carefully planted by the inquisitors in their secret file. Galileo never dreamed of it, and that explains why he did not ask the Pope for explicit clearance before he raised the dangerous subject again. Of course, in 1632, Galileo the showman went further than simply defending the Copernican hypothesis. He wrote it into his book, The Dialogue of the Two Chief Systems of the World, and had the Pope's views expressed by the character Simplicitus. So it was that in 1633, Galileo was commanded to appear before the Inquisition. They accommodated their distinguished guest, vacating a three-room apartment in the Vatican and having his meals prepared by the chef of the Tuscan Embassy. But it was still a trial by the Inquisition, and torture was threatened. But in the end, Galileo didn't have a case to make. Still, 16 years later, he didn't have the proof that the Earth orbits the Sun. And so it wasn't a case of science versus religion but of heretical unproven view against Catholic dogma. Galileo, we must remember, was a practicing Catholic, and so he renounced his views and accepted his punishment. As William A. Wallace sums up the Galileo case, it is much better, in my view, to see him as a true son of his church, willing to accept its teachings when his reason, despite its strong intuitions, was unable to establish their opposite. And, as a true scientist, he not only admitted that he failed to meet the standards of his profession, but also persevered during his last years in the quest for a new science that would, one day, to furnish the proofs that eluded his grasp. So, was this a case of science versus religion? No. In reality, it was a case of heresy recanted. But I think that doesn't matter. This is one case where the myth speaks more accurately than the truth, because the case of Galileo isn't really about Galileo at all, but about the dramatic overreach of religion into the realms of the testable and the real. The Galileo case may not be exactly as the myth pretends, but what it stands for is real enough. The Inquisition was responsible for the deaths of somewhere between 30,000 and 300,000 supposed heretics. To this day, church authorities deny the usefulness of condoms, and many churches teach young earth creationism. Isis and cults like it sweep the Middle East, oppressing, torturing, and killing. The myth of Galileo is one of man versus God, of freedom of thought versus oppression. It may be just that, a myth, but we must still refer to it, still appeal to its example. Hey, so thank you for watching. What do you think? Uh, was this a case of religion versus science, or was it uh, uh, something else altogether, as I argued? Um, I know I missed out a huge amount of what happened in the Galileo trial, uh, that his imprisonment was basically house arrest, and he moved around quite a bit afterwards, and so on and so on. But um, I think I captured the essence 
please do let me know what you think in the uh, comments below. And as ever, thank you for watching, subscribe, and I will see you next time.